Have you ever wondered what a game designer is and what a game programmer is? Maybe sometimes they're called a game engineer, software engineers. You often hear the terms developer, programmer, engineer, all used interchangeably, but they're not a game designer. Let's talk about who are these strange people and how do they all work together and what do they actually do? Hi everybody, I'm Troy Dunaway. I've been designing video games for over 30 years. I'm the department head at CG Spectrum and the head of game design program. So first of all, the most important thing is to understand that there's two ways that we do technical things in the game. As a generality, there's what we call programming languages. Those are most often things like C or C++. These are more traditional languages that take you many years to learn. They're very technical, very difficult. People that work in that are generally called, again, gameplay programmers or game programmers. They are working kind of, you know, in text words all day. It's very complex. It's very convoluted. For those of us that don't know how to use it, it's like looking at another foreign language, literally. You know, and it might as well be Greek written in binary because, you know, it's, it's that, that easy to understand. I don't look at C code. I'm a game designer. I never touch it. I know how to program it. I did. I, I studied, you know, programming back in the day and I was originally an engineer and I jumped out of that very quickly because I didn't like it. I just didn't prefer to do that type of work and working in C was really challenging for me. But as a game designer, I still need to be technical, right? And so they have what's called scripting languages. You might have heard about Python or Lua. These were kind of simplified versions of things like C. They're derivatives of kind of these more complex languages, and that's what they call scripting. But that's what's called an interpreted language. So an interpreted language is really one that kind of sits between, imagine if you spoke one language and your friend speaks another language, and you gotta hire a translator to sit between the two of you, literally. So this other thing is just a lot slower. It doesn't mean that I can't talk to them you know, back and forth and have a conversation, but there's somebody else in the middle constantly trying to interpret what we're saying and it just slows everything down. So these scripting languages are interpreted languages. And so they run a little bit slower because they gotta you know, do that, that translation in between, but they're a lot easier to use. So I don't need to speak your language. I just need to speak kind of some basic technology, some basic things to understand how to use them. Now lately, there's a lot of what they call visual scripting languages. So if you're familiar with the Unreal Engine, they have a thing called Blueprints. So Blueprints is kind of now taken and put in a graphical interface to that scripting language. And so as a designer, all I work in anymore is Blueprints. And even in Blueprints, I only do maybe a quarter of what Blueprints can do. So Blueprints can be used to build an entire game, although not always the best, but Blueprints can also be used to, to do you know, a lot of other things you know, in the game. I just use very simple things in Blueprints to set up, you know, how's a door work? How's a character work? How's basic AI work? I still need a programmer in there as a game designer to help me. They do the more technical stuff. They make it run fast. They optimize it, those kinds of things. And so if you think about the job and you think about what they do, you know, on the technical side and kind of how they vary, yes, game designers also need to worry about fun and building stories and building all these other things and building their levels. There's a whole other set of things, but just comparing them on a technical side purely. Again, a game designer needs to know a fraction of what a game engineer needs to know, you know, on the technical side. Both still need to be decent in math. I would say engineers probably need to be excellent in math. A game designer needs to be okay in math. You need to have some other basic skills like that to, to work. But you're not doing that same day-to-day -day job. So often the programmers are, are creating tools that the game designers can use. And so that allows us as game designers to work faster, work easier to, to, you know, put things together in kind of a more logical way that makes sense in our heads and not have to sit there and, and spend the time to really code it out, as they say, and to write that code and to make it really super, you know, work technically and know all the math and know all the science, and know all that crazy stuff there. So if you're not super technical, game designers, you can still get by. You need to be a little technical. So you do need to know some math. You do need to know some concepts of programming things like that, but you don't need to be a programmer. So don't, you know, if you want to be a game designer, don't feel like you need to know C or C++ or any of these other languages. You need to know maybe a Lua or a Python or, or Blueprints or something like that. So you need, to, you need to have some technical skill. And the more technical you are as a game designer, the better you honestly are going to be. You do not need to know how to code and be careful about that because again, trying to learn how to be a great programmer could take you years. It's, it's incredibly hard. It's a whole nother job. And many successful people have combined those together. There's many gameplay programmers who are programmers who use their technical and C code to actually implement gameplay features. They might build weapons, things like that. And they do, you know, the design work and then they implement it, right? So there is a job for those people that do both, right? So there's a lot of different variations, but try to understand that they, they have very, very different levels of technical skills and abilities that they do in very different jobs. Programmers do the coding all day long. Game designers do, you know, a minimal to medium amount of, of technical work. Hopefully that helps answer the question. This one comes up all the time. 
If you like this, please like and subscribe. We hope to see you next time. Take care now.